hello everyone in this video let us talk about uh, exceptional handling using uh, script runner for jira so when you are uh, writing scripts uh, using script runner for jira i'm sure uh, you will encounter this situation where you will need to do some kind of uh, exception or uh, error handling and uh, when you're writing a code, when you are uh, basically trying to do something, maybe you're trying to solve a problem using Groovy scripts, try to always uh, ensure in your code that uh, you are uh, taking care of all the exceptions, all the possible errors that might come, and you need to handle them properly. So let me give you a very simple example in this video. and. Uh, this will be a very short video because I wanted to do this very quickly, but this is a really important topic. So I wanted to uh, share this. So in this particular piece of code, you can see here that uh, we are trying to retrieve the issue details. So for this particular example, I am uh, trying to, let us say, get the status of the issue. So if I run this uh, piece of code, I should get the current status of this uh, issue, which is nothing but uh, this uh, uh, huge string. But I can probably focus on, uh, let us say, the name, I believe. So if I want to just retrieve the name of the status, so I can do that very easily. And we all know how to do it. But what if I change my issue ID to something like 156? Let us see what happens. So if I run this uh, piece of code, I will get this uh, null pointer exception and it says cannot invoke method get status on a null object. And it is a very obvious error because uh, the error is suggesting that uh, this particular issue is uh, not there in Jira. And uh, the problem here is that we need to handle this, uh, this exception. So you may write maybe a huge script or maybe you're trying to do some automation and you have connected maybe different things uh, and you're trying to achieve something great but uh, you need to make sure that your script uh, is able to handle these uh, situations so for doing this uh, in this example i will uh, give you a very simple uh, solution it is not really the perfect solution but uh, it will probably give you some idea and of course you need to know how jira works and uh, uh, you need to basically figure out uh, what things can possibly uh, be null if you are uh, doing something with Jira. So for this example, we are since we are talking about issues, uh, if you do a simple check on uh, your issue, whether your issue exists or not, so you can do something like this. If your issue exists, then you can uh, return the, the status of the issue. But if it... Uh, doesn't really exist at all you can just display a message here that uh, issue doesn't exist and uh, this is a very simple example but of course uh, it will give you some idea so now if i run this piece of code i get the same result to do which is my current status but if i change my issue id issue key to something strange so now we have uh, this nice message issue doesn't exist which is actually telling us uh, uh, what is possibly wrong here and of course when you're writing maybe a bigger script you can handle different uh, situations maybe when you have this situation where is issue is not there at all maybe you want to display a message or maybe um, you know handle the automation differently or whatever you're trying to do so this is just one example and uh, this is really important because uh, uh, if you know how Jira works, uh, you should be able to use the scripts in a way where you can handle each and every situation. Uh, for example, let us say if you're working with versions and you're trying to do something with the versions and you need to make sure that uh, your version exists in uh, Jira. I made one video about uh, doing a transition using script runner. And when you talk about uh, doing a transition in workflow, workflow statuses are not just uh, a simple drop down field that you can change straight away. First of all, you need to check whether uh, there is a valid transition or not. 
based on the current uh, status of the issue, then you need to check whether the person who is doing this transition or trying to do this transition has rights to do it. Maybe there is a condition or there is a validator. So you need to make sure that you and you you take care of these uh, situations when you are writing your code. And uh, <clears throat> for doing this, you of course need to have uh, a very solid uh, Jira administration knowledge and uh, if you're new to Jira, it will probably take a while. But again, if uh, you're trying to learn Jira administration, first learn how to use uh, Jira. I think that should be your uh, your first uh, first priority. And of course, at the same time, also start playing with uh, doing scripting if you want to learn a script enough for Jira and if you want to build some automation. But uh, in this video, I just wanted to quickly show you how you should uh, or the importance of uh, doing uh, error handling or exception handling when you're writing your code. So I hope this video was useful. Thank you very much. <laughs>